G'day, hi, and welcome. <laughs> uh, what you saw there was uh, me playing a, a EVH um, Eddie Van Halen turn. Yeah, I can't speak. Eddie Van Halen signature model guitar in Long and McQuaid. Uh, that's me back in the 90s there. <laughs> Reckless Angel, I think, was the band. Uh, anyway, at Long and McQuaid, uh, playing that EVH guitar it was a cool guitar. Um, and uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that little clip in there. Uh, I forget when I recorded that. Obviously, not the best recording it was recorded on a cell phone. So, <laughs> but it was a very cool guitar. So, uh, the the video topic for today is uh, tone woods. I'm going to revisit that one again. Um, there are people out there that are like really hardcore on one side of the issue or the other, where it's either tone wood is complete BS or tone wood is everything, right? And I think there's something in between that needs, you know, like, I, I'm kind of one of those guys that, yes, tone wood is a thing. If you can't hear it, I always say, if you can't, if you, if your ears can't discern the difference, don't worry. If you can't hear the difference, don't worry about it. Uh, but I'm also hearing, like, guys talk about, like, how, you know, almost any guitar you pick will be good enough. Doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, you could buy anything you want because... You know, at the end of the day, a guitar is just a guitar, just a guitar. It doesn't really matter what you buy, right? And I don't really subscribe to that because the problem is, is that you buy a guitar and it, on its own, it'll sound whatever it sounds like. And you'll say, hey, this guitar sounds pretty good. I got a pretty good sound out of it. And then you go and you'll play, uh, say, like either in a jam or in your band or whatever, or you'll be on stage with somebody else, and suddenly that the guitar on the other side of the stage, for some reason, just sounds ten times better, and you can't figure out why. And it's like, what is it that's different? Uh, even if uh, so, then you start, you know, looking at the amp, you look look at all the stuff that the other guy has. Uh, so you'll be looking at like the pickups, you'll be looking at, you know, what's different in your setups. And at the end of the day, it, it, the, the one thing that does make probably the biggest difference in your sound, uh, and I'd agree with some people on the uh, particular, particular channel on this, that, that mostly your tone is going to be in your, like your speaker. But even at that, I don't 100% agree that that's the only major thing in your tone. Uh, because I have a more of a philosophy of a little thing, little things add up. So where most of the most of the um, arguments I see for and against the tone wood thing kind of goes something like this: It's like here's five guitars. We're going to test them all out and play them through the same amp, uh, same settings, and see what we get different, right? And you get variations of. But then you look at the guitars that are picked, and it's like, okay, uh, this guitar is basically, like, you, you picked five of the same guitar. And this is also why, like, some guys can't seem to find their tone, because they they buy the same guitar over and over again. Uh, let's say uh, you get a guy that buys uh, Les Pauls. He just buys Les Pauls or even Jackson Flying Bees like this or whatever. And he just keeps getting the same sound over and over Okay, so I bought this guitar. I bought this guitar and I bought this guitar, but then when you look at the specs, there's very little difference in the specs. So if you got very little difference in the specs of the guitar, you know, scale length, pickup, uh, you know, ch choices of woods, you're going to hear very little differences in each guitar. So each guitar will have a variation. So even if you bought two of the exact same guitar, there will be a small, you know, a small difference between. Uh, one guitar yeah so let's say whatever guitar you have you had like say five of those right and you're saying okay well, which one has the best tone you probably would never be able to discern which one actually had the best tone but you might say over time say okay well for example I have two Gibson SG's uh, with very similar pickups and you know pretty much both guitars are built all mahogany uh, neck and body uh, rosewood fingerboards, right? Same scale length, everything like that. Both have classic 57, except for one guitar. The SG3 has cla uh, classic 50, 57 plus, which is slightly hotter, slightly darker sounding pickup. But at the end of the day, a variation of. 
So you wouldn't be able to say one guitar is going to stand out in the mix. And of course, if you're comparing guitars that are that close, uh, you know, like at that point, yeah, you could say, well, it doesn't really matter which one you pick because they're both going to sound almost the same. But that said, let's say I take a Fender Telecaster or Stratocaster with the alder body or a maple body, maple neck, maple fingerboard and put it up against my SG uh, with the mahogany body, the mahogany neck and the shorter scale length uh, and the rosewood fingerboard. You're going to have two guitars that will stand out from each other. Uh, and one with single coils, one with uh, you know humbuckers. Okay, so you could see that there is a lot of things that you base buying a guitar on. Uh, you're seeing violins in this just because this is my uh, like my instruments uh, folder <laughs> so bands and instruments and everything that I've collected over the years are in this so you'll see violins and mandolins and everything in this video um, just, so, just so you know to answer that question if anybody asks it. but the thing I noticed the biggest for myself is when I started looking at the Tonewood debate it's like okay well how do you get a different sounding guitar so even if we're to say that uh, you know your amplifier and your speaker make the most drastic difference uh, I would say yeah okay but once you got your amp you got your amp right what you put through it is going to change as well you know uh, again depending on how different of a guitar you, you, you buy so there's a couple of things you can look at obviously the tone woods is one thing how big of a difference is tone woods it's you know, do you want brighter? Do you want darker? Do you want more higher mid? Do you want lower mid? So if I'm picking a rhythm guitar, for example, and I'm, and I'm a rock metal guy, and I want a dark, heavy sounding rhythm guitar, uh, something that's going to sit in the background of a recording a little bit more, I'm probably going to go for a mahogany or a swamp ash guitar, right? With whatever neck, it could be maple or it could be mahogany itself. But if I want it really dark, I'll go all mahogany, mahogany neck, mahogany body. And then I'll go with an ebony fingerboard, and that will give me probably the darkest sounding guitar in the universe. Although ebony tends to be a bit of a brighter sounding fingerboard, uh, it also tends to be a deeper mid, so like more like a, you know, a low cut mid. So it kind of I wouldn't say sculpted sound, but if you did the, the sculpted sound, you'd probably be in the abyss of a black hole of darkness, <laughs> just because it'd be such a dark sounding guitar. That guitar is going to sit in the background really well. But let's say I want to pop right out through that with the other guitar. Well, then I'd grab a mahogany guitar with the mahogany being all mid-ranged and everything like that, give you natural mids. And then I could go with a, uh, uh, you know, like a rosewood fingerboard or a maple fingerboard, which is, you know, the maple fingerboard has a high mid and uh, a really bright sound. So it does cut through very, you know, like it cuts through a little bit more. And then, of course, if you go with a... Uh, you know a, a rosewood fingerboard rosewood kind of is like the highest mid-range uh tone that you're going to get coming through that the, you know the speaker it's going to it's going to cut through so when you go to eq it you'll notice that some guitars uh will eq differently based upon whether they're brighter or darker sounding but they'll also uh where the mid-range of that guitar is and some people say, yeah, but I still think tone woods are bullshit because there's no scientific way to uh, to figure that out. Well, actually, that's incorrect. Uh, one thing you're looking at violins also in here. Uh, one thing they do, I forget the name of the machine. If it's an oscillation machine or some sort of a spectrometer or whatever. It, it, anyway, it measures frequency. So if you put a note of whatever say a440 we'll just use that for an example and you you see where uh, the violin top resonates okay uh, you go through like a to g and all the sharps and all the flats and you'll see somewhere that it will dominantly say say like it's a, a, a b flat or an f sharp that that violin will resonate the most on that frequency level right uh, and what you get what it measures is basically the natural uh how, how do i put this not like the not natural key of the wood but like whether it's a darker or you know like a heavier sounding wood or whatever 
more sustaining, whatever. But they can also, I've seen graphs where it shows pretty much where it shows when you, you put like frequency, uh, you know, different frequencies on, uh, you know, basswood, alder, uh, maple, mahogany, swamp ash, poplar wood, that where it, the wood will basically show at certain frequencies it will show what the the basically the EQ is kind of thing and you get an overall uh, variation of okay this wood has a lot of low end very low mid and a very high high or it's like a really high mid not that much low end and a really high high and when you look at that graph you can see that you know pretty much like everybody's saying and your ears will tell you this too mahogany is a dark sounding wood you know like it, you know if you compare it to maple or alder it's a dark sounding wood uh, if you listen to uh, pop like poplar guitars and uh, basswood body guitars they tend to be a more blurby low uh, low end wood where it, you get you don't get the clarity in the mids and you don't get the clarity typically in the uh, the highs because it's a softer wood uh, in, in a sense if, you know being a soft wood the wood itself is less dense even though it dries very very solid uh, it, it it tends to have a what I call the, the tonal qualities of a rotten tree stump you know being basswood and, and poplar basswood being probably slightly better than poplar uh, the manufacturers will, will refer to it as a neutral sounding wood where I say it's just kind of like void of any tonal real Good tonal characteristics where mahogany again you get a very high mid you get a, a really thunderous low end and then you get a, a really you know you know kind of like a mid high end and uh, alder uh, you get like a fairly beefy low end but you almost get like a sculpted mid and a really stellar high end that's why I tend to like my two favorite tone woods are mahogany and alder so that, that that's just my preference um, you'll notice Stratocasters are always either made out of usually maple or alder because those are the brighter sounding woods and they work well for you know basically Stratocaster blues country that kind of stuff they tend to have more of a sparkle to them uh, and the pickups do have a lot you know in the voicing of that too but the pickups are only really amplifying what's already there so your tone does come from the guitar uh, maybe not all your tone but a lot of the tone does come from the guitar you know it comes from you know it, everything adds up like you'll get a guy that'll argue that tone wood is a, just BS but then they'll argue that uh, you know a graphite nut versus a plastic nut versus a bone nut you know like how you know like it's, it's, it's a huge difference right uh, but no it's a difference but it, everything's you know a subtle difference but it all adds up so you know if you start with the tone woods okay you can kind of almost maybe not a hundred percent get it right but you can kind of pick your tone just of, of the guitar based on the tone woods let's say you got uh, like that Van Halen guitar that I was playing in the beginning that was a pretty bright sounding guitar because it had an elder body maple neck maple fingerboard it's about it's the abyss of bright you know what I mean like it's 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 like a star you know what I mean uh, maybe the, you don't like that sound maybe you don't want something that bright sounding uh, well if that guitar was mahogany with a uh, a rosewood or an ebony fingerboard and the maple neck it would still probably be semi bright but not as bright but if it was a mahogany neck mahogany body a rosewood fingerboard it would be a very dark sounding guitar uh, and you know that's just what I've noticed over the years of playing now the problem you get is then the guys will argue well can you pick it out in a mix well you might not necessarily pick a guitar out of a mi in a mix in a, in a short segment video uh, to be able to get okay I guess this guitar right I guess that guitar right uh, but what you might do is like again if you're comparing guitars that are similar it's going to be really difficult but if you're comparing guitars that are not that similar uh, you know or slightly similar uh, you, you will discern the dark guitar from the bright guitar and the dark and the bright is really going to be dictated by the tone woods most of the time now mind you pickups will can be voiced brighter or darker or whatever like a Duncan Invader is going to be a pretty dark sounding pickup 
but like for example my uh, Duncan Distortions SH6 they have a really high aggressive mid in there maybe not super high mid but it, it's a really bitey pickup uh, has a lot of punch to it, it really accents uh, the Alder and stuff like that but if I play the guitars unplugged you'll, you'll hear it unplugged one guitar will be a little darker a little brighter whatever uh, but it helps you pick your tone when you're like okay well I've, let's say you've got a guitar in, you know every category that you want so to speak and then you're like okay well I'm still not finding my sound well then you could go you know, you know you can consider the speaker maybe you should consider the amplifier and the speaker first uh, I would always say that if you had 10 different amplifiers in one guitar you got 10 different sounds uh, if you got one uh, 10 guitars in one amplifier you got 10 variations of one sound so it all plays in you know uh, and as far as the speaker being the, the single biggest factor I don't know because uh, if I take a guitar, a couple of different guitar heads, and run it through my, say, my Mesa Boogie cabinet, uh, I don't get the same sound out of that cabinet each time. So the head makes a big difference too. My Fender Hot Rod Deluxe will never sound like a Marshall. You know, it just, it just never will. Uh, my, um, oh, that's a pretty blurry shot. Uh, my um, VTX 15 watt uh, transistor amp will never sound like my Hot Rod Deluxe. You know what I mean? Like it's the it's a total different tone. Like you can't even, you know, like you, it, it's just a total different animal. Uh, and when you start EQing it to be as different as possible, then that's when you see the the drastic variation as well. So factor in the tone woods, factor in the pickups, factor in the scale length, scale length, uh, scale length. It's a weird thing to pick out, but once you start picking it out. Like it gets to the point where you're like, okay, there's people that are down tuning their guitars in this day and age, uh, especially in the metal scene. It's like everybody's playing some sort of drop tuning, right? Uh, and a lot of guys are using standard six strings to do these drop tunings, right? And they get a pretty belty sound out of it and, and stuff like that. So you'd say, okay, well, that's, you know, how would you tell the difference between a baritone sound or a extended range guitar? and you know just a regular you know standard ranges like 25 uh and a half scale kind of fender scale guitars which is most guitars uh or the the gibson scale of 24 and three quarters you know would you be able to discern that well they're 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 the the seven strings and the eight strings like i got here like this eight string it, it does not sound like my gibsons <laughs> you know what i mean even though it's a mahogany body mahogany neck it's a jabota fingerboard so that's a little it's kind of like uh, jabota fingerboards so far what i'm getting out of it it's kind of like a uh, rosewood without the mid-range so it's a little bit again void of tone we'll call it a neutral sound uh but it's not a bad sound it's just a, it's it doesn't really give you anything but that said that guitar is the darkest sounding guitar i've ever played in my life it, it's just it's the abyss of a black hole of, of a dark sounding guitar it's a great guitar so i like it for the heavy stuff now mind you the pickups have a dark voicing to them as well so you know if you're going to play like heavy stuff black metal whatever you can do it blues not really the guitar for blues jazz yeah jazz musician could use something like this again not really the ideal guitar not bright enough right uh, my recent requirement uh, requirement of uh, this Jackson this Jackson is like super super bright uh, very crunchy very punchy very it's it's probably one of the best the best guitar sounding guitar I've ever owned it's, it's 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 just an awesome awesome guitar it sounds nothing like the eight string <laughs> you know what I mean like there it's just you would pick it out in a mix if you were at standard tuning with both you would definitely pick it out in the mix in drop tunings it'd be a little bit trickier but you would start to hear that gnarly bow wow sound that you get out of the extended range guitars so that makes uh would i say a, a scale length makes more of a difference than say tone woods i think they're on par uh, because with the longer scales you tend to get more of a punch on the bottom end right uh and you start to lose that mid I think 25 and a half after uh, after guitars get longer than that you start to lose that that mid mid-range bite that that cut through that you get so I, what I do with my notice with my Gibsons and the Gibson scales is that it really cuts through uh, the notes sound a lot tighter uh, 
so you lose the twanginess with the shorter scales uh, but you get more a, a tighter sound aka the Gibson growl right um, so scale length makes a huge difference I find uh, huge being you know you, you'll, you'll just you'll just notice it after a while where it's like you'll listen to a song and say yeah that guy's playing a seven string you know you'll just hear that natural low that low elephant murmury low end that boosted low end uh or you'll be able to say you know that kind of sounds less polish uh you might not be able to do it every time but if you play the guitars all the time you'll notice it and you'll definitely notice it at what i call stage volume so everything adds up now the finishes uh yeah again you know most ears probably won't be able to hear the difference between a, a nitrocellulose lacquer finish and a uh, you know a uh, polyethylene finish and it's one of those things yeah you could probably discern it over time if you were really familiar with the guitar you were playing you say okay yeah this guitar versus this guitar sure or if you take a guitar and you play it with the, the nitrocellulose finish on it and then you take that uh, same guitar and then cover it with polyethylene then you might notice a, a hint of a difference uh, so but it adds up you know it, and it adds up at volume so meaning if you're on a stage with like 50 monitors you're going to hear every flaw your guitar has uh, or, or every you know good thing your guitar can do so most people like I say if they can't hear the difference I always say don't worry about it but what will happen like for example you saw two Jackson flying bees in this video both were cool right one's a fixed bridge this one obviously um, and one's a Floyd uh, one's the GS32 the this black and gold one is the uh, oh, that's a cover of one of my songs uh, yeah so that's what the, these car pictures are about is uh, it was the avatars for one of the, the song I got called wheels of fire just you know just throwing that in there uh, but uh, what I was getting at here is like that, that Jackson flying bees that I have uh, you got one with a maple neck maple fingerboard and a, a poplar body but with a Floyd Rose uh, that's for here comes Kong that's the, <laughs> the avatar for that so uh, then you got another uh, the other guitar with a neck through body construction which also makes a big difference uh, maybe not a big difference when I say big difference I mean it's a difference right so what is a big difference for somebody I don't know because for me a little goes a long way for other people not so much but if I'm on stage with my JS32 and the other guys on the other stage with my RT uh, Jackson R Pro Mod uh, R, uh, RT5 uh, I'm going to if they're playing through the exact same rig uh, all things given even no matter what that that R5T is going to sound better it, it just it's got better pickups it's got better tone woods it's uh, neck through body it's got a uh, fixed bridge it's just going to have that advantage over the other guitar now let's say okay um, same thing uh, both guitars have fixed bridges uh, you're still going to notice that the better sounding guitar is going to be the neck through body and often guys that argue that you know like tone wood doesn't mean anything uh, they show you their favorite guitars and they're almost especially if they're metal guys it's almost going to be a mahogany guitar almost guaranteed a mahogany or an alter body guitar and they won't even know why they, they like it more than the other ones it's like oh this guitar just sounds so great uh, and the problem is is it's like I see it consistently so it's something that's resonating with them while they're playing this guitar okay yeah playability I mean you can get guitars in the $400 range that play phenomenally uh, so it's got to be more than just playability right so okay playability that you can get at you know a decent price uh, good pickups well you can get guitars with good pickups at a lot of different price ranges too like you could buy a pro guitar under a thousand dollars I mean like a guitar that it's as good as a guitar is going to get it just might not have all the bells and whistles on it like it might not be a flashy looking guitar but it probably you know like as good as a guitar can get right um, so with that 
said, it's like, okay, well, why does one guitar just always sound better than uh, another guitar? Uh, and it has to do with all these little other things that you add up. Uh, even electronics, stuff like that, can make a slight difference. Better pots might give you better frequency response. Uh, and it is measurable stuff. You, you can measure it. It's just most people don't have the ability to measure it. But there is machines that exist there that will measure it. And I've seen convincing, uh, you know, um, you know, like uh, at first it goes, well, tone woods don't exist. And then it goes, well, they exist, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. And this is where the gray area, I think, is. Okay, so let, let's say you get a guitar. Uh, we'll, we'll use my two Jackson Flying Vs as an example. So it says apples to apples, okay? And you notice one sounds better than the other. And if you bought two JS32s, you probably see a fixed bridge JS32 and the Floyd Rose uh, base model a JS32 uh, Flying V, both made out of poplar, both having maple necks and whatever fingerboards, you're probably just going to hear a variation of it and you'll just decide whether you like this guitar or that guitar. Uh, kind of like how I go with my SGs, it's like okay I tend to like my 61 reissue a little bit more just because it's my favorite guitar of all time, uh, even if it's not the best guitar of all time. It's just, I, I just really love this guitar, right? Um, but that said, if I could only pick one of them, I'd probably take this one. But I can't say this one sounds like super superior to the other SG because it doesn't. It, it sound it's a variation of. They're they're both mahogany necks, both mahogany, you know, like almost everything on these guitars is the same. So you wouldn't be able to probably pick them out in a mix unless you were extremely, extremely familiar with, with the sounds of your guitars. Uh, then you say, okay, yeah, that's the 61 reissue. Okay, yeah, that's the SG3. Uh, okay, yeah, that's my uh, JS32 Flying B. Okay, that's the, um, you know, uh, the uh, the RR5T Pro model uh, Flying B, right? Uh, but the thing is, is I've recorded with both of them, and I should do some recordings just to kind of show you what I mean, where you'll hear a, a slight difference, okay? Let's say there's just a slight difference between one guitar and the other. But at some point, you're going to favor one sound over the other. It doesn't matter if it's a big difference. And this, this is what, the same thing with the tone woods. It doesn't matter if it's a big, big difference. Because once you prefer something, you prefer it. And that's it. And that's what you're paying for. Uh, the trick, though, is to find out what you're buying before you buy it. So I tend to buy really cool guitars based upon a bunch of criteria. The first thing I look at is not the price. I look at what is it made out of. Because you can get guitars made out of poplar and basswood over $2,000. And to me, uh, that is a ripoff. Unless you really prefer that kind of dull, missing, void of character sound. It doesn't mean you can't get a good sound out of these guitars. I'm not saying that at all. My J $400 JS32 is, is a great sounding guitar for 400 bucks. It's just, it doesn't have that little extra. And that little extra, uh, like for example, uh, I'm going to be doing a comparison video between my, um, uh, what you call it, my JS32 and my R5. You know, there's a, f f uh, the, the R5T the R is four times the price. Do you get four times more guitar for the, that, that extra price? No, you get a little bit more guitar. Uh, but that little bit, adds up it, it, it adds up to uh, a guitar that's just more uh, pleasing to the ears right and now factor in playability and stuff like that you know uh, like for example that double neck you just saw I got that guitar it used to be under a thousand dollars and I got it for like 900 and some odd dollars tax and all uh, or maybe twelve hundred dollars tax and all I think uh, that guitar, okay, phenomenal sounding guitar, but it resonated so well because it was the size of a dresser, you know what I mean? And plus it had the double neck, you know, like it had the 6-string and the 12-string, and it had good pickups in it. So it was a pro sounding guitar, it just happened to weigh 14 or 17 pounds. Um, you know, obviously like this hollow body guitar, the, uh, I don't have this one anymore, but this Artcore, it was a great sounding recording guitar. Pickups were uh, Al Nickel 2s, 
horrible for live playing is that you, you really couldn't discern discern one pickup from the other because they were so low output. It was like you were playing a normal high output pickup on like two or three. Uh, but when you recorded with it, it was like the sweetest tones ever. Plus, being a semi, uh, being a hollow body, uh, you know, ply, uh, birch hollow body, it was a very bright, awesome sounding guitar. Uh, but I bought it as a jazz box. So that guitar obviously is going to sound completely different from my metal guitars, right? So you get a guitar like that, you get a metal guitar, you get another, you know, vintage sounding guitar, different scale lengths. Suddenly you find yourself not buying the same guitar over and over again. And uh, for my metal guitars, yeah, variations of I'll buy this guitar, that guitar, whatever, you know, whatever my money affords. Uh, but I know what kind of sound I'm going to get out of them. You know, whereas for the guy that doesn't, can't seem to hone in his sound, he doesn't know where to start. Uh, like I say, Les Paul guys, they'll buy like five Les Pauls and then wonder why they can't get a different sound. You know what I mean? It's, you buy a guitar, you got to look at the specs. The specs will tell you a lot. Uh, and again, sometimes it's not even about the tone, sometimes it's about the playability, right? So like if you want to play like metal, you really don't want a hollow body like this. You know, and I know a hollow body, they say, well, a hollow body, yeah, of course tone winds make a difference on a hollow body. Uh, and, and agree it does but it, it you know it makes difference on everything it's just how much difference and how much can you notice and how much does that mean to you uh, that's more the argument so for some people it's not enough to justify going up or down in price and the thing is is like it's not even always based on price uh, like uh, just because you're looking for tone woods it doesn't mean you're gonna go out and buy the most expensive guitar ever uh, sometimes you're buying tone woods just for a different sound. So you, let's say you get a guitar, there's four guitar choices, uh, it's a similar type of guitar, but the guitar comes in four different types of body uh, choices. Uh, say alder, swamp ash, mahogany, uh, and maybe maple. Okay, let's say, so you've got four really good choices of you know, tone woods there. And you know, swamp ash probably being the most sustainous followed by mahogany and mahogany probably being the darkest and most mid-ranged uh, followed by alder being you know like probably the most uh, brightest uh, with the you know the middle mid and a really good low end and uh, basically maple like kind of like taking your cue and just putting everything to 10 or you get a really thick low end really high mid-range and a fairly high uh, you know high end which makes it great for clean playing, right? Um, so it depends what you want, like, you know, but it's nice when you can look at the makeup of a guitar and say, hey, that guitar will suit my needs because it will give me the bass uh, sound that I want. So if, you know, you can make just about any guitar sound good, it's like, but to get the sound you want, you know what I mean? Like if you want a bright sounding guitar solo, uh, you know, you want that Van Halen type of sound. There's Eddie Van Halen played maple fingerboards most of the time for a reason because he liked that sound. Uh, that Hammer Diablo you see there, that guitar is arguably, I think it's the second best sounding guitar. Alder body, maple neck, uh, rosewood fingerboard, really, and Duncan pickups. Uh, I can't remember what they were exactly. Nobody kind of really knew because Hammer offered a bunch of different pickups in that model. Uh, but that Green Hammer Diablo, uh, that guitar, I'd get on stage with that, and I played it, guys, there was, that was like an $800 guitar back in the 90s, right? And I'd get on stage with that thing, and I'd play it through several different amps, uh, usually my own rig most of the time, but sometimes I'd take it to jam lights or whatever, and I'd play through a rig, and everybody would always say, there'd be two guitar players on the stage, me and somebody else, and people would always say, wow, that guitar sounds amazing, wow, that thing sounds like a real guitar, you know, I mean, it, you know, it was funny, uh, but uh, it was, that guitar just had an incredible sound to it, uh, and I was like, why does this guitar sound better than that other guitar over there that's $1,500, and what, you know, what was different about it, and it was the outer body, it was the rosewood fingerboard, you know, that, that cut through that, like when you do a solo on this, it would cut right through. This guitar was the angriest sounding guitar in the world. But then when you went on the clean sound, it was just like, uh, 
you know, really, really had a really nice bright uh, high end, but with a really nice low punchy mid. So it sounded so nice on the clean channel too. It was just such a great sounding guitar. And my Jackson Flying B that I got now, the RR5, it sounds even slightly better than that. But it sounds similar to that. Why? Because it has the alder body, maple neck, but an ebony fingerboard. So it's a little bit different sounding. Uh, and the differences are, again, small. I'd love to uh, still have that Green Diablo just to compare these two guitars, just to see what the, the, the variation is. And again, I'm going by memory here, but I remember the Diablo was... Uh, that hammer Dia that green hammer Diablo would cut through a lot more because of the the rosewood fingerboard and once you hear it like you usually hear it after you play guitar for a long time and especially if you play straight through the amp you, you start to hear the, the those little subtlety tonal differences and then once you hear it through the you know like the natural sound of your guitar without compression without like extreme gain and stuff like that and then you go and play it through uh, a better rig with lots of gain or whatever maybe not better but a different rig with lots of gain you start hearing the characteristic of that guitar and that's when you start to decide whether you like a darker sounding guitar a brighter sounding guitar a lower mid a higher mid uh, there are some guitars I had uh, that they sounded great on their own but in the mix they just never cut through you, you know what I mean they just they, you know like it seemed like the souls were blending in with you know they didn't really cut through and I always wondered why that was uh, especially if you use one guitar to record everything sometimes even if you use a different sound per uh, you know just to distinguish the lead guitar from the uh, rhythm guitar sometimes what happens is, is the guitar just sounds again it's just a variation of so it doesn't cut through where if you have two guitars that have two kind of more distinct sounds even if subtly more distinct uh, it, it, it pops out you know like it'll pop out so like I say if I use the my H string with the longer scale length for the rhythm and then use one of these bright sounding guitars uh, brighter sounding guitars for the leads it gives a really big contrast and the cool thing is you hear both guitars equally well because they contrast they don't blend they contrast and uh, you can do that if you know what you're picking you know what I mean so uh the tone woods to me uh again there if you dig around enough you'll find people showing you like science graphs of where the you know the wood you know where it's where its frequencies are and you know okay it has a natural low end uh, higher uh, this guitar does better in the low end and, you know, or this you know uh, this wood tone wood does better in the low end uh, mid or the high end than this guitar uh, this guitar, you know, you know, like it, it's almost one of those things where you look at the tone wood at, from an EQ point of view. Uh, it kind of it kind of makes the decision for you whether you're going to buy that guitar uh, to do a certain thing. So, again, if you're a blues guy, uh, you're probably going to be looking for guitars that have a brighter sound, a, a higher mid. Uh, and handle uh, you know playing straight through the amp a little bit better than you know you know without compression and stuff like whereas if you're a metal guy you're probably looking for the guitar that has the darkest sound possible right and you know high gain pickups and all that again it all adds up so even if you were to take and uh, I think Warmoth uh, guitars did a really good uh, demonstration of the difference in uh, tone woods. Now, mind you, they went straight through the amp. They were playing a Telecaster, and what they did is they took one Telecaster and they basically transplanted all the parts of that Telecaster onto three different bodies. So the only thing that was different was the uh, bodies of the guitar, and they had an alder, a mahogany, and a maple. And you could hear the difference. Was it a massive difference? Again, it, it, because this was as apples to apples comparison as you could possibly do. It wasn't a massive difference, but it was a difference that you could hear. And again, a variation of. So the idea is more of not, you know, is it a major difference? Is it is that the difference you want to hear? So that, I think that's more the argument. Uh, a better argument is just, you know, you know, what what is it you're looking for in sound? 
Uh, but from a you know tone point of view, I you know like the idea of tone only coming from you know predominantly just the speaker. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily wrong, but it's not also it's not a hundred percent correct either because you start changing a little thing here, a little thing there, a little thing here, a little thing there. Suddenly, those little things add up to something big. Again, change the scale length, change the the type of pickup, single coils obviously versus uh, humbuckers makes a difference. P90 uh, humbucker, uh, you know, uh, four wire humbuckers versus single pole. That stuff makes difference, you know, makes a difference. So you can you can you can use that on one side and then say, okay, well, what is it I want to amplify? A dark sounding guitar, a bright sounding guitar. You know, at the end of the day it does add up. You know, it does add up. So I guess I'll leave it at about that. I know some people will still say, no, nah, it's BS, whatever, don't believe it, whatever. But for the most part, again, if you you, 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 when you're in the music store, try every guitar on the wall, and you'll always find one will stand out to you. For you know, just try it unplugged, and then okay, if it sounds good unplugged, then plug it in, and then take another guitar and compare it to it. So you'll probably find yes, pretty much you can make any prosumer, you know, intermediate uh, guitar sound good. Uh, beginner guitars, it's hit and miss, right? But we'll say you got a guitar that plays well, and it's just a matter of picking, you know, what kind of sound you want. And again, using the guidelines of, you know, dark woods, dark sounding woods versus bright sounding woods, you can save yourself a lot of money by not buying five guitars that are dark sounding when you want a bright sounding guitar. Why can't I get, you know, I EQ it, but it still doesn't sound bright enough. Or why is uh, you know I want a darker death metal sound? Why why does this guitar sound so bright? Um, you know again if you're buying elder body guitars, don't expect to have a you know like a black metal guitar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you want mahogany for that, right? Uh, if you want to uh, play in a like a pop a pop band or something like that, or a party rock band, you probably want something more like a Van Halen -y bright sound. You know what I mean? And Again, is it a very just a variation of yes and no? Uh, the, that variation of is a part of your tone, and that tone is going to translate. Uh, you know, I, I will secede that you know, like tone is in the guitar, not the fingers. Uh, you know, like you know, like technique is technique, and technique will produce different tones. There's no no one's going to argue against that, I don't think. But but yeah, we'll say like it, you, you're judging the instrument. Uh, by buying something that when you look at the recipe of it, you can tell roughly what it's going to give you. you know what I mean? And then from that point, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to take every elder body guitar with a, a maple neck and an ebony fingerboard, and I'll compare all of them, compare all the prices, compare all the uh, the pickups and everything like that, and see what I like best out of all of those. Or I'll take all of the mahogany body and neck guitars with rosewood fingerboards like Les Pauls and SGs typically uh, and compare all those and see which one of those I like for the dark sound, uh, dark mid-range sound and then for like the abyss of dark I'll say okay I want a ebony fingerboard with a mahogany neck and mahogany body and I want that really in the darkest sounding you know high gain pickups you can get like Duncan distortions or something like that and you know, you can go that, or hey, that's it. I'm out of the metal thing. I want to do uh, country and blues and and stuff like that. And Kate, now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get myself a Strat or a Telecaster. Do I want the more out front sound of the maple body neck fingerboard, or do I want maple neck and fingerboard with an alder body, which has a you know softer mid for playing clean? You know, again, you you can do that. So, like knowing this. Uh, saves you a lot of uh, aggravation of figuring out where your tone's gonna, you know, when it comes out of that speaker where you can shape, you know, like moving your mic around in the speaker when you're recording makes a huge difference, right? When you're playing live, okay, uh, that makes a difference too, where you've moved the mic on the speaker, right? Uh, that makes a huge difference. You, That's a really noticeable difference. If you change the speaker, really noticeable difference. You change the head, uh, that's a really noticeable difference. So your amp, like I say, if you have one guitar and ten amplifiers, you got ten different sounds. 
Uh, if you got you know 10 guitars in one amplifier which is usually more the case uh, you're going to get a variation of most of the time if you pick the same type of guitars and most guitars that are marketed out there you know uh, can be put into different categories of like fixed bridge and floating bridge and then scale length and then you know dark or bright you know and but the problem is is most guitars are geared towards the metal head uh, that's not a problem, like because I'm a metalhead, right? But you know, I would say, well, maybe not most guitars, but probably half of the guitars out there, like anything pretty much coming from Jackson, Ibanez, or whatever, uh, is going to have, you know, that, you know, more likely to have a higher gain pickup or whatever. Uh, anything coming from like Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, or Fender is, you know, kind of more the the vintage, the blues, uh, the jazz, the rock. Uh, soft rock stuff like that and maybe hard rock you know uh, and then of course for the jazz guys they pretty much look at you know semi hollow bodies or hollow bodies right uh, which is a total different animal altogether and but again you can pick a guitar the type of guitar the scale length all that stuff you know I know I'm repeating myself now and that will all add up uh, but before you even do that, like I say, if you have a, again, it's not always about the price because like I say, you can get pretty much everything I've mentioned in many different price ranges. It's just what sound you want. So again, if you like, for example, my Fender Hot Rod Deluxe amp, it tends to be a slightly darker sounding amp, but it has a really outrageously high mid range, which, uh, almost doesn't matter what guitar you play through that amp it cuts through everything including drums uh it'll even it'll even cut through cymbal sounds like i mean it's such a really if you put the tone on 12 on a fender hot rod deluxe you will shatter your brain and ears it's just it can get so harsh <laughs> you know uh but you know like most of the time i play with that the the uh, the the tone on that one on two or three sometimes I'll put the mids full and it like there's almost no point in putting any mids on that amp whatsoever because it's already such a high mid range on it but if you want like really out front it will do it like it, it'll almost pierce your brain uh, how high mid range you can get that amp to sound uh, but it's a more of a looser sounding amp so it sounds great for like uh, arpeggiated chords and stuff like that surf guitar that kind of stuff or you know like punk rock hard rock you know, whatever you, you get good sounds out of that but then my little vtx 15 uh 15 watt amp that thing is super super tight it doesn't do what the deluxe does uh that thing has got so much low end in it uh, it is a bit of a dark sounding amp as well but it it doesn't cut through anywhere near the same but you can compress the shit out of that thing uh and get really cool metal tones with it and it's only 15 watts right uh but that said at the end of the day what's coming out of the speaker is the just the, the ref, you know the final character of what you're starting with and what you're starting with is your tone woods and then everything builds on from there so that's my argument for now I'm sure most people you know like in the comments will have different things to say uh, try to keep it as respectable as possible uh, you know I because there's no point in just going to the ad hominem attacks because like it's like either you believe in it fine you don't believe in it fine if you can't hear the difference don't worry about it uh, you know the for those that can hear the difference and, and one argument I, I saw and I think this is uh, probably pretty factual too uh, was that most people that believe in tone woods tend to play straight through the amp uh, most people that don't believe in tone woods tend to play most mostly metal guys that play with a lot of compression a lot of gain stuff like that which at some point yeah the gain kind of takes over everything but it still has that core sound of bright or dark right and yeah so it's it, again it, the idea of this video is so that for those that are looking for you know whether tone woods are not you know a thing or they are a thing uh you know for the purpose of you know before i buy my next guitar uh is you know does it make sense to spend xyz on this guitar when that guitar is built the same way as the guitar at a much lower price you know what i mean like 
why would I buy a Jackson Flying V with a, uh, a, a poplar body at $1,200 or $2,000 if I can get that same guitar for $400? You know, and then, you know, plot pickups in there. You know, say, okay, well, if I take my JS32 and I pull out those cheap Jackson, uh, you know, base model pickups and throw in some Duncans, will I get that much more out of it? You know what I mean? And, you know, will I get what that $1,600, you know, with the same same thing you might not get exactly the same because you know there's other factors such as fret work and stuff like that but you might get pretty close and it might be worth it for you to do that uh you know bolt on neck versus neck through body i say always go if you can always afford the neck through body pay the extra you won't regret it because you you do notice these things as you play these guitars for long periods of time uh in comparison to the other guitars sitting in your room so you know, if it's always like a skill testing question, can you pick it out of a mix? Uh, and that's all that matters. Well, then maybe yes or no. You guys debate amongst yourselves. But if it comes down to, okay, uh, you, you play this guitar all the time, and it, this one just sounds a little bit better and a little bit better in the guitar realm or any sort of instrument realm, a little bit more is a lot more. Because when you play a guitar that sounds better, you play that guitar more. Uh, you know, so if, you know, like people have, like usually when they go to the stage, they usually have a backup guitar and that's usually the guitar they don't play. You, you know what I mean? Like it's usually the, the, the lesser guitar, you know, most people will not take their crappiest guitar, play it all night and leave their good guitar, the better sounding guitar, you know, sitting on the stand. You know what I mean? It, there's a reason for that because when you sound better, you, you, you're always trying to upgrade to something that sounds better, right? Uh, and there's a lot of things that make up your tone. Everything adds up, in my opinion, because you can notice it. You can, you know, like if you use the gain off your amp and the gain off your amp is not that great, you add a pedal that has better gain, uh, well, that changes your tone and it, it gives you better, you know, like effects. Everything plays in, like everything plays in. Uh, the clarity of your pickups uh, on, you know, with effects, without effects, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, like single pull, I find if you're playing straight through the amp, you almost can't beat like uh, Gibson Classic 57s because those they're dying or burst buckers. I think those pickups are fantastic if you're playing straight through the, especially a tube amp because of the way they break up the tube amp. But if you're playing with a lot of effects, uh, chorus, flange, stuff like that, I find those pickups are a little bit muddy for that. Uh, where four pull pickups tend to work a lot they're less dynamic but they, they're a lot clearer right and then you can you know saturate with effects uh high gain versus medium gain uh when you're recording you're almost better off to go with medium gain pickups because you can saturate more and when you're playing live you, you tend to like the high gain pickups more you know and again high gain pickups tend to be darker sounding uh, medium gain pickups and low gain pickups tend to be less dark sounding uh and more dynamic you know, and again, depending on how the wired, clearer or more dynamic. So there's so many different things to judge a guitar on. And I know one thing, my favorite setup seems to be of guitars when I pick them up out of the store and try them out. I always tend to prefer the guitars that are for myself because I tend to like a brighter sound. I always tend to love the uh, uh, Alder body. I think that's the best sounding wood out there for my style of playing. Uh, it gives me the right aggression, the right punchiness, really good high end, um, and I really love the maple neck. Gives you know uh, a good brightness to it too. And then the ebony fingerboard seems to be the icing on the cake. Uh, even though the ebony doesn't punch out through the like as quite as much, I just find it has two things about ebony. I find it's just just a really smooth fingerboard and the other thing i find is that it has just the right amount of brightness the right amount of uh you know kind of like sculpted mid sound uh again fingerboards don't give you as much tonal variation as the body does but it all plays in so once you hear it you hear it you can't unhear it and then it's just a question of you know is it justifiable because you, like i say you can get five guitars at the same price made out of different things and if you have to choose one of them which one's going to suit you the most so anyway i'll leave it at that because i'm running in circles now but i hope you enjoyed the video 
so again, if you're going to debate it in the, the comments, just you know try to keep it as civil as you can. I know it always gets into a shit show at some point, but uh, there is there is evidence for it. So um, anyway, next to that, uh, all links are down below if you'd like to support the channel. Next to that, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourself. Be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. Have yourselves a great day. Eh?